So, um, I met Dan at a good friend's home, my childhood friend, she introduced us. And we were friends first for quite a while. And my parents were stationed out in California at the time and they had a fabulous backyard. And so we would have barbecues and Dan, all of our friends would come over and Dan would be there and he would hang out with my dad. And he actually became good friends with my dad first. And my dad really liked him. Uh, so after that barbecue that Dan hung out with my dad, he ended up asking me out later that week. He asked me on our first date and he was quite the gentleman, which I loved about him. And he you know, picked me up and took, took us to a nice dinner. And halfway through dinner, I think was when I knew that he was the guy for me. So that's how it started. He was very smart. Got in good with my dad first. <laughs> Um, Dan is very thoughtful. He, every birthday I've ever had has been wonderful. He thinks about it, he plans surprise, whether it's a big birthday party or one year he, he had a friend of a friend of a friend who knew someone that was on Dancing with the Stars. And I loved the show, I voted every week. And Dan came to me about a week before my birthday and said, I have plans, make sure you wear a cocktail dress and be ready to go out to like a nice dinner. And I thought, okay, we get in the car to go to dinner. Two hours later, we're in LA and he said surprise and we were there for the show and it was incredible. Um, and that's every year, my birthday has always been very special, whether he's stateside or deployed, he always puts so much effort into it to making it a special day for me. Um, and he really, he takes the time to do something that he knows would be very special to me. And he works hard at uh, getting either, he had one year he had friends fly in from the East Coast for a surprise party. He's just done wonderful things like that for as long as I've known him. And always very secretive about it, so I never know what's coming, which is great. Okay, so in 2012, Dan was on deployment in Afghanistan, and it was a long deployment. It was nine months, and uh, so at the end, at the very end of month six, going to the beginning of month seven, I received a phone call at 6.10 in the morning, and um, it was um, the phone call saying that Dan had been involved in an incident and that he was currently in surgery. And um, that was, you know, life, life changed then. Um, they didn't have a lot of information and that they knew that the right side of his head had um, been damaged. I was told that they, a friend of ours who was not currently deployed had volunteered to be my Keiko officer and that he was on his way to the house and was going to be with me through whatever was going to happen. So, um, Dan was in a medically induced coma at the time and on a breathing tube. and he wasn't um, stable enough to be flown out of Afghanistan. So we, uh, we waited, we waited for several days, and then there was a miracle, and Dan st stabilized enough to be flown to Germany. And once he was in Germany was when they took him out of the medically induced coma, and they removed the tubes so that he could breathe on his own. Originally, I was supposed to fly to Germany and meet Dan, uh, but he improved. His health improved to the point that I was going to be flown to Walter Reed, uh, Bethesda, Maryland, and meet him there. And so that's what we did. And uh, I waited for him to fly in there. Uh, a fellow wife held my hand, and we were surrounded by other other men that were not on deployment. They were there waiting with me. 
And it was pretty incredible because in our community, um, no matter what's going on, you're always surrounded. So it's kind of beautiful to think about that Dan's brothers were protecting me stateside with me holding my hand and they were also with him on the other side of the world um, and he was never alone. And they were with us every step of the way. Um, it was incredible. And on that deployment, two of our best friends did not come home. Um, Dave Orson was with Dan when Dan was hit by the bomb and Later on, uh, Pat Feeks stayed in constant communication with us while we were in the hospital, and both of them would be killed. In two months later, in August, and I think that Dean and I live our life knowing that he did come home, and others, those that we love, did not. Many over the years have not come home, and so it's very important to us to continue serving, to continue the mission and serving the American people in any way we can, and we owe it to them. And that's what we'll continue to do. Okay. So something that I greatly admire about Deanne is his strength, no matter what is happening. When we were in the hospital, shortly after he'd been flown in from Germany, the doctors informed us that they didn't believe Dan would see again. For me, this it was very difficult news to hear. And Dan was completely blind and he reached out and said my name and took my hand and he told me that everything was gonna be okay. And he'd just been told that he would probably never see again. But he was incredibly strong for me. And he told me not to worry. <laughs> Dan will always be that person, um, as long as I've known him. I've watched Dan have strong faith even during the hardest moments of our life. I've watched Dan give strength to others when times have been very difficult. And that is something I've always been incredibly proud of him for doing. When everything is crazy around you and you feel like the world's falling apart because the person you love was just blown up by a bomb, he's the person to tell you it's gonna be okay and not to worry. Even when he's the one that's been blown up, <laughs> which I think is incredible. And I love that about him. Um, we lived in the hospital for a few months and after after about a month and a half Dan was able to get out of the bed and walk on his own and we would walk to his appointments in the hospital and there was a day that I got totally turned around trying to get to the optometrist the eye specialist and Dan still completely blind told me Tara it's this way and marched off. He had memorized the map of the hospital in his head and was able to get me to the area that we needed to be in. Now, people did have to jump out of the way as he was walking because he didn't see them, but I still thought that was amazing that in the, the short time we'd been there, the majority of the time him bedridden, he was able to navigate the hospital and get us to where we needed to go. Dan is um, incredibly intelligent and Although, I give him a hard time. Um, whew. Dan is incredibly driven. When he was told he would have to be medically retired from the military, uh, this was, of course, a hard day. We thought Dan would be in the military for 20 years, um, and it ended up being 10 years. And the next day, he woke up and he told me that he was gonna figure out a way to keep serving. And he was going to apply to the top policy schools. And he did, and he got into everyone that he applied to. And I was very proud of him for that. And he kept moving forward. He went to school, he received his master's, he worked very hard, he had excellent grades. 
And then he wanted to come home, wanted to come home to Texas. And so when I met Dan, we were not in Texas. He was stationed in California. And I tell everyone this, when you meet a boy who's from Texas, outside of Texas, they tell you from the first day you meet them, they're going home to Texas. So I always knew that we were going to come home to Texas one day. And Texas boys, Dan in particular, he's special. He's a gentleman always. He's respectful and he's kind. And he will always listen to another point of view, the other side of the argument. He won't necessarily agree with you, but he will tell you why he disagrees with you in a nice way and in a respectful way. And I, I like that about him. I think that is a great quality to have. Dan is incredibly passionate when it comes to service. It's what he has always known, he's always done, and he's always loved to do. He, Dan is a policy nerd. <laughs> and I, I find that incredibly attractive. He is someone that will research everything, talk to everyone he can about if they're an expert in the field. Um, he won't come out with a policy without getting the research done, looking into it, seeing what the best option will be. Uh, he's very thoughtful. He really wants to make the best decision for us now and the future. And I think that will be very important in Congress that he won't just vote this way or that way. He really will sit down and, and think about it and, and talk to people that it will affect and choose the best thing for the people. And he will always do that. One of the reasons I fell in love with Dan is because he's the type of person where you never have to worry that he's saying one thing to your face and one thing when you're not in the room. Everything he would say, he says it to the person. And he stands by what he says. 